DUI deaths are on the rise across the country. The National Transportation Safety Administration says drunk driving deaths went up more than 14 percent between 2019 and 2020. 625 this morning happening today. A St. Augustine man who killed three people and hurt three others in a drunk driving crash will learn his sentence. Investigators say a drunk driver crashed the car she was riding in. 69 year old Gary Benson is accused of driving drunk, crashing this car into a 78 year old woman and two Girl Scouts she was buying cookies from Saturday just before four. On her way home from a NICU visit, Katie was killed in an accident. The other driver was drunk. 21 year old Ernesto Rodriguez's BAC was over twice the legal limit when he crashed head on into a vehicle in Caledonia. Marissa Murrow, 19 years old, bright eyed and beautiful, killed by a drunk driver. New details is new time from police in Warwick. They now tell us a man is charged with DUI after crashing through a fence and hitting a home Saturday night. We are learning new details about a deadly hit and run crash on northbound 680. Happened about 11 o'clock last night north of Berryessa Road. A vehicle collided with another, causing it to crash into a concrete barrier. The person in that vehicle died at the scene. Hey, but we got a party going on at 10 o'clock. Hey, Corbett, check it out real quick, bro. What's up? Look, hold on. It's a party going on later at uh, Destiny House. You got a slide. It's at 10. All right, bet. I'll slide through. All right, bet. I'm going to see you later then, brody. See you later then. All right. Man, day day's He's coming. There. We Let's there. Go.
get it under her. I need to be checked out. Like, right away, I know fire checked on you. You're, does your neck hurt or anything? Yeah, no, no, you're okay. All right, man. I'm gonna. Uh... Right behind you. Right behind you. You're coming through.
She's okay. Tommy. She, she, she has no, 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 no. We did everything Please. we could to save her. No, no. But her heart I need to see. It's my yeah, daughter. Yeah, Are you yeah. sure it's my daughter? Yeah, actually. I, I don't know. <laughs> He has to identify the body for No! No, please, daughter, no! Mama, no! Please! Please! Open your eyes, Mama! Mama, are you okay? Mama, please! My best friend. She was my best friend. Have a very, very big dreams. I feel like uh, I'm there too because she was my support. I'm sorry. Sir, is that is that your daughter? Are you sure? Yes, sir. Nice to. Alright, 
Joshua Jackson. And how are you related to this case? Uh, I'm a good friend of the defendant. And were you involved in the <coughs> collision? Yes, I was in the passenger seat. You were in the passenger seat? Did you sustain any injuries as a result of the collision? Yes, I have uh, muscle problems in my arm. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to play football again. Good morning. Good morning. Um, can you state your name for the record? Laporta Patrick. And you're the mother of the defendant, John Patrick? Yes. Uh, and what, if anything, would you like to uh, tell her? I know that there is nothing that I can say that would uh, make the parents of the children that were lost feel any different. Uh, but as a parent myself, that is my child. All right, you want anyone else? Uh, no, you're not. All right, does the defense wish to be heard? Yes, Your Honor, I do. And uh, I'd like to say something, and then uh, my client, Mr. Patrick, would like to This is incredibly sad. It's a, just a tragic uh, circumstance. And it's not the first case I've had where I've done these trials and, and it's different defendants and it's different victims, but it's always the same, just tragic, utterly terrible outcome for everyone involved. And I know my client feels some regrets before he ends the case. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, no, no. Uh, one, I would like to apologize to first of all the people that can't be here this is what I've done and also the people that are here. Um they trust me with their life. I told them that I would be the designated driver. I wouldn't do what I did, and instead I did the complete opposite. And as you can see, something bad ended up happening. Um, I'm really sorry to everyone in here, uh, including myself, because I had a lot of dreams. Of, I wanted to go places, and now I can't do that because of the mistake that I made. Um, I want to apologize to my mom because you trusted me to go out to have fun with my friends you, and instead I ended up in here. Um, I just hope that y'all could find it in your hearts to forgive me. All right, the court finds that the defendant is statutorily ineligible for a grant of probation. Therefore, probation do you understand that, Mr. Patrick? All right, the court will impose a sentence as follows. The defendant is sentenced to state prison for a total of eight years plus 45 years to life. The court would note that the sentence will be subject to the provisions of Penal Code Section 3051 given the defendant's age on the date of the incident. As to count five, the court has considered the aggravating factors, including the crimes involved great violence, great bodily injury, a high degree of callous disregard for human life, and the mitigating factors, including the lack of any record. Based on the particular circumstances of this case, including the tremendous pain and suffering caused by the defendant's conduct, the court finds the aggravating factors of this case outweigh the mitigating factors. Therefore, the court selects the high term of three years. As to the special allegation within the meaning of Penal Code Section 12022.7 sub B, the court will impose an additional five years to run consecutive for a total of eight years. As to count four, the court will select the midterm of two years plus three years for to run concurrent actually with count five. As to counts one, two, and three, each in violation of Penal Code Section 187, murder in the second degree, the defendant is sentenced to state prison for a term of 15 years to life pursuant to Penal Code Section 190 sub A. As to the court's discretion to run the sentences con concurrent or consecutive, the court has considered the horrific acts of this case, the conscious choices made by the defendant, including the decision to drink alcohol, then the decision to drive a motor vehicle, to drive a motor vehicle with a blood alcohol level of 0.12, 
those selfish and dangerous choices made by the defendant directly caused the loss of human life, including the victims in this case. The court has also considered the tremendous hurt, pain, loss suffered by the families of the dead. Based on the totality of the circumstances in this case, despite the defendant's young age, the court will run each life sentence consecutive to the other. Therefore, the defendant will serve his eight-year determinate term, then begin serving an indeterminate term of 45 years to life in the California State Prison. The defendant will also be ordered to pay restitution for all damage <coughs> and loss suffered by the victim's family. Restitution may be collected from the defendant's earnings in state prison. The defendant is to provide specimens of blood, saliva, thumbprint, and palm prints for DNA testing for Penal Code Section 296. In the exceedingly unlikely event that defendant will ever be released from state prison, the defendant will be placed on parole for life pursuant to Penal Code Section 3000.1. If you violate, then you'll be returned to custody for each violation. Court has tremendous discretion in terms of uh, your ultimate sentence, Mr. Patrick. If appropriate, the court could have sentenced you to a much shorter term in state prison. However, given your conduct in this case and the grave consequences of your decisions and actions, the court believes your sentence, which in essence means you will spend the majority of your natural life in state prison, satisfies and achieves the general objectives of sentencing under California law, including punishing you, the defendant, <coughs> protecting society, and deterring others from such criminal conduct by demonstrating its consequences. Despite your young age, just 18 years old, still in high school, you are an adult. Two different times I served in Iraq, nine months each time, and I served with multiple individuals that were almost your exact same age. You have been convicted, prosecuted under California law as an adult, and now you've been sentenced for the crimes you have committed. Your incredibly selfish decision to drink alcohol and then drive a motor vehicle has forever changed the lives of many in your school and in your community. There's no going back. Several of your classmates are dead and several are seriously injured because of you. No high school graduation, college, jobs, weddings, families for those individuals. And why is that? Because of your decisions. Your apologies and regret after the fact, although in some sense I appreciate them, they're primarily and essentially meaningless because of those losses. You cannot unring the bell that you started. I hope you heard and at some point fully appreciated the words spoken by the victims and their family uh, in court today. And as you sit in your prison cell for many years to come, I hope you think about those words and, will, and the words will continue to echo in your head. This may have been your first contact with law enforcement and the court. It may have been your first mistake. It may have been your first lapse of judgment. But those first lapses of judgment can have horrific consequences for others, and it is having horrific consequences for you today. You will never again have the opportunity to murder another member of this community. Make no mistake about it, you have been convicted of murder and are considered a murderer as of today. Whether your weapon was a gun or a motor vehicle, the results are exactly the same. The pain and suffering for the victims and their family is exactly the same, and you will be punished exactly the same. No one in this day and age can say that they do not know the dangers of the UI. It's not an excuse uh, that anyone in my position is going to accept if someone comes into court and says they don't know the dangers of driving under the influence of alcohol. You're old enough to drive, you're old enough to get a driver's license, 
and you're old enough to know about the risks and dangers of driving under the influence. When you made the decision to drink, you made the decision to ignore the dangers, and you made the decision to drive. You're old enough to help be held responsible, and now you will suffer the consequences of your murderous decisions and actions. Let this be a warning to everyone, both here and everyone in the community. No matter how smart a person may be, how strong a person may be, how successful a person may be, how nice a person may be, no one can avoid the physical and mental effects of alcohol and drugs. So if you make the decision to drink or take drugs, you better make the decision not to drive or else you may very well find yourself here in this courtroom and the court will have no choice but to take the actions that it took here today. The defendant is remanded to the custody of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department for delivery to the California Department of Corrections. You can take it back.